Voy de improviso del viento, del viento rápido. E como un chavo volare en el cielo infinito. Sasha Summer, thank you so much for logging on and joining me today. So we have one of my favourite recipes that we're going to be cooking today and that is a classic family spaghetti bolognese. I feel like every single household has their version of what a classic spaghetti bolognese is and today I'm going to show you mine. It's not as traditional, uh, we don't have the celery in there or anything like that but I do have some additional extras that don't come with the original recipe and again it's just my twist, my take. And the great thing about spaghetti bolognese is it's customizable. you can literally use whatever you have going on in your fridge. It can all go in one pot and simmer away, but this is a really fun ragu sauce to do, so I'm going to tell you everything you need to prepare it. Okay, so as you can see, I have a wonderful selection here of ingredients. The first thing you're going to need is a decent sized onion. Of course, this one is very big. You could probably get away with just using half of this, but I'm doing a really lovely batch here because I plan to freeze some as well for meal planning and prepping. I also have some garlic here. We're going to be using this both in the ragu sauce, and I also use this to season my pasta with, which I'll show you guys later. So we have that. We have these beautiful... Um, peppers from the garden which are absolutely gorgeous the colors they are so autumnal they add such a gorgeous sweetness to the dish so we have those but feel free to use a bell pepper if that is more readily available for you i have some chestnut mushrooms again you can use button if you would like i have some beautiful fresh bay leaves and you're going to need a few of those i have some thyme here beautiful sprigs of thyme again um add such flavor such depth and Oh god, these just smell incredible. I love cooking with thyme, so we have those. We also have a stock pot, a nice carrot. I'm not going to grate my carrot. I like it to look quite rustic, so make sure that if you're doing the same, you give it a good clean, a good brush. So there we have a carrot. We have some um, chopped tomatoes here. A nice jug of passata. Of course, whatever mince you're using, you can be more traditional about this and have a combination of beef and pork mince, but I'm just using lean beef mince today, but again, Feel free to change that up should you want to. And the final thing is pasta. Um, we're using tagatelli today. Feel free to use whatever pasta you would like. Just regular spaghetti, shells, whatever you would like. And in terms of herbs and spices, I have salt and pepper, which is standard. I also have a nice glug here of good quality olive oil. I have some dried herbs. I have rosemary and oregano. <laughs> And that has been chopped much finer than I could ever get it. And it saves on the tears. Okay, so I'm going to be making my bolognese in this lovely cast iron pot. And the great thing about cast iron is the fact that it can go on the hob and in the oven. And this is going to take cooking time in bulk. So it's absolutely ideal. I had to cook them until they soften and become translucent. And I'm going to rustically chop my carrots and add them straight in. Again, I'm not peeling these. I kind of think that they lose their charm a little bit when you peel them carrots. So I'm going to keep the skin on. But again, you do need to give them a good wash if you are doing that. And pop them straight in with the onions because they're going to take a longer time to cook. So you want to get them in as early as possible unless you're doing the same with the onions and you're blitzing them up. And then feel free to put them in a bit later on but these are going to go in for now. I'm going to chop my uh, mushrooms now, pretty much do the same thing, cut them as fine or as big as you would like and this is the opportunity to get majority of your veg into the bolognese and the reason that I do this without adding the meat first is because I don't like the meat to go hard or gristly or rubbery so I don't like to cook it for too long and I feel like the veg will take a little bit longer than the meat will so I'm going to add majority of my veggies now so that they can begin to soften and take on the flavour and then by the time we add the stock after they'll be nice and soft and more likely to absorb all of the flavours from the stock. You can see that these colours are super autumnal, you can use any veg that is in season but these colours are just gorgeous and very very comforting. I feel like spaghetti is one of those dishes that we're all so familiar with and it just it smells like home. So that is the veg, we're going to let that sit and fry happily and now it is time to add some garlic. As I mentioned, I'm going to be adding garlic twice which might seem quite extreme and it is but 
we like things quite garlicky here. And the first way that I'm going to add garlic is to spray to my sauce. Um, again, this is going to infuse the tomatoes, infuse the meat, and it's just going to create depth and depth of flavour. But another thing I like to do, because I find pasta really bland, I like to cook my pasta as you normally would, and then give it a quick blitz with some butter and some garlic, and give it a bit of shine, a bit of texture, and you wouldn't believe the amount of difference it makes. So, I have two decent sized cloves here, these are going to go straight in, and then one more decent sized clove that we're going to use for later with the pasta. Okay, so it's now time to add one of my favourite bits, and that is the peppers, and these are absolutely beautiful bejeweled peppers that just look so amazing, and each one of them is a different colour, a different texture. I think these are really charming as they are, and I don't really want to slice them up because I think you'll lose a bit of their character. So what I'm going to do is literally just slice them in half, just so the flavour can, again, get into the sauce properly. And then apart from that, I'm going to leave them whole. And again, when you get a piece of this, it's going to add such a sweetness and depth of flavour that I really enjoy. And again, they just look beautiful in the bowl as well. Alright, so my veg is sufficiently softened now, so I'm going to add the mincemeat straight in and allow this to now start to brown and again infuse with the veggies and take on a bit of flavour and caramelise a little bit. I've Again, I've used beef mince but it is traditional to actually use the combination of pork and beef but I don't have any pork and to be honest I actually prefer the taste of beef because I think it adds a really lovely richness. This is just a lean steak mince. Um, and it's delicious. And all I'm going to do now is brown this mincemeat off, and then we'll get on with adding the herbs, spices, seasoning, and stock. And then it's just a case of adding our tomatoes, and we are done. And we can put this baby in the oven, and it can sit and bubble away for as long as it needs to. We round up our mince now, and what we're looking for is a very crumbly texture when it comes to our mince. If you have lumps, you need to break them down, stir things for a little bit longer and that's what we call working the mince and it's really important and it is really worth taking the time to do that so now we're going to add the stock and I'm going to be using a beef stock pot it comes in a jelly form you can actually go and get liquid stock straight from the supermarket ready done for you if you don't want to do this step but I think these are great or you could simply use a stock cube okay so our stock is nice and dissolved that goes straight in and what we're going to do now is we're going to do our seasoning because we haven't done that yet. So, a nice handful, not a handful, but a decent amount of salt. Again, you can do this to your liking. And whatever the amount of salt you put in, you put half the amount of pepper. But that's just general rule, I think. That's the rule I tend to go by. And now we're going to add our dried herbs, which again is a combination of oregano and rosemary I think it was if you have fresh feel free to use that and I'm just going to let this bubble away really gently and let the stock sort of heat up a little bit more and then I'm going to go straight in with both my passata and my chopped tomatoes okay so in with our chopped tomatoes give that a nice bit of a stir again you can use chopped tomatoes only or passata only I just like to use a combination of both because I think it adds a nice flavour and a nice texture but do what suits you guys you can even use fresh tomatoes to pound them if you have the time and now I'm going to add my passata and I'm going to bring this up to a gentle boil and we'll put the rest of our greens on and then that is the time it will go in the oven and it will sit and bubble away happily until we're ready to eat it Volare. So it's a gentle simmer now and it's now time to add the sprigs of thyme. So I'm just, I'm not even going to take them off the stems because I'll remove them later. And I think again there's something quite charming about having them on the sprig. So I'm just going to add a few of those for flavour. Accompanied by two to three bay leaves which again I'm just going to leave in their original form. And that is it. I'm going to let this sit for a couple of minutes um, and then I'm going to put the lid on, pop it in the oven and forget about it for at least 45 minutes. Okay, so this is my little pasta hack. I've actually already cooked the pasta according to the recipe or how you would 
cook your pasta. It's been boiled basically. And now I'm going to give it a really light fry. So I'm going to add a bit of oil to the pan, a bit of salt and pepper, and you know I mentioned we needed parsley. Well, I didn't actually put that into the sauce because I wanted to do a parsley and garlic pasta, which I think is going to be incredible. So the first thing I'm going to add is the pasta to the oil. And I'm just going to get that straight in, sizzling away. And when that's all glossy and coated in oil, we're going to add the parsley and two really decent sized garlic cloves that have been crushed, minced. Just make sure that it's nice and fine because you don't want a chunk of raw garlic or even cooked garlic um, going straight into your mouth because it's a lot of heat. So make sure you mince it and then just lightly stir fry this for a couple of minutes and it will add a lot of flavour. It just makes regular pasta a bit more interesting. the richness of this sauce is absolutely incredible so much flavor so comforting and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the pasta directly to it because I don't really like or I used to but not so much anymore um, the pasta plain on the underneath because I don't eat pasta very often so for me it needs to be drenched in the sauce or I'm just not going to want it so I'm going to add it straight in and have that beautiful garlic infused um, pasta which I'm hoping you get in a shot of. you got both in yeah, so we have this beautiful garlic infused pasta, which I'm going to grab some tongs now and I'm going to pop it straight in to the spaghetti sauce, or the bolognese sauce, sorry. it guys my family rustic spaghetti bolognese i hope you all like the look of it and i feel like the only thing to do now is to give it a try absolutely incredible really delicious flavors and a joy to eat such an amazing comfort dish i hope you all enjoy it don't forget to comment down below with your favorite version of spaghetti bolognese and let me know if you enjoy this if you're going to make it thank you for cooking along with me we're going to take a bit of a break now on the Cookbook Discussion Summer Series, but we will be back next month with Series 2. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you're looking forward to Series 2, what recipes you would like to see, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!